Hello everyone, it's John from IT Skills Academy and in today's video I bring to you the second part of the tutorial how to create a forgot password uh, system in PHP and MySQL. In part one of this tutorial uh, we worked on the forgot password um, page uh, which is basically a simple form that just collects your email address and this is the email address that you provided during registration so if you have not watched a uh, part one of the uh, this tutorial i would invite you to do that right now so that you at least have an understanding and you can be able to like um move with us step by step i have also created a demo of uh, this uh, whole uh, uh, project so i would invite you also to be able to watch that video so that you have an understanding of how this um a system is working i will provide the two links in the description of this video so that you can first of all go watch those two uh, so that we can all be on the same page so as i've said basically on this uh, forgot password uh, page we are just collecting the email address of this specific person and uh, in today's video now what we'll be doing is to add some life to it so that when a person clicks on the recover password uh, something happens and this something is one uh, will be ver uh, verifying that the email that you have provided is uh, indeed a valid password uh, rather uh, a valid email address and it is the email address that you provided during registration so if those two are correct then we are going to send a ring into your email address that email address that you provided and upon clicking on the link will be taken to another page from where now you can be able to reset your password so uh, the purpose of uh, sending the link into your email address is just to ensure that uh, it's of course for security purposes yeah just to ensure that the person who is resetting uh, the um, um, password is the real owner of that specific account and if it is some sort of hacking then these uh, uh, will um, make sure that the owner of the account is made to understand that someone is trying to reset uh, the password so I'll just uh, maybe right now take you to the forgot uh, password.php code so we are now in Visual Studio and this is the basic form as you can see it here so uh, the form has um, a method of post that means we'll be passing the email address using the post uh, method you can see here we have included the forgot.php uh, um, which is um, the page that we'll be working on in this uh, specific video you can also notice that i also have it open on top here and uh, some of what we also did in part one is um, we have this uh, session created here so this is a session that will just uh, help us to get uh, the success mes uh, message and just to tell us that yes indeed an email um, with a link was sent into our email address and if something happens while trying to set that email address then we are going to be able to get that message with the help of this session that we have here so this will just basically help us to have the message appear on top here um, uh, given uh, the um, results of uh, the verification because as I mentioned we'll be verifying to see that the email address is valid and we'll also be verifying to see that the email address um, uh, provided here is the email address that was provided during registration so I just want to take my time and explain it bit by bit if you understand what i'm saying then you are free to skip to uh, whatever part of this video that you're interested in 
all right so that session will just help us to have that you can see now here we have the input um, this will basically of course help us to get the email and you can see it has the name email which is very very important very very important and it is also a required field and uh, you can also see that uh, the type is email these uh, will uh, go uh, a long way in helping us to um, um, uh, in helping us to validate um, the email address to ensure that the email address that you provide uh, is indeed a, a, a real email address like it should have the at sign somewhere yeah so you can also see that uh, at the, at the uh, lower part of the form here we have the button and the button has the name submit which is very very important and it has the type of of uh, submit now the combination of these two and the method of post will help us now to pass the email address provided here to uh, the forgot.php where we'll be doing the validation the verification and name it all that stuff now that you have that understanding let's just head on to the forgot.php and as you can see in this page um it's in, in actually in the validate uh, folder yeah in the validate folder now we get the forgot.php and we don't have anything here so these are where all the magic will be happening this way we'll be writing the uh, php uh, code that will help us to uh, uh validate the email address uh verify to see that the email address provided is what we have in um, in our database like it was provided during registration and most importantly we are going to send a link to that specific email address of course you need to have access to that email address so that you can be able to access the link so basically what we're going to start with here is um uh, to uh, open the PHP, we just have it in lower case. Um, you can just leave it like that if you don't intend to have any HTML below it, but maybe just in case I'll need to have any, let me just close it there. So, the first thing that I will need to do is to include the con.php. This will just help me to connect to my database. And remember, we are working on the local host. Yeah, so it's also very important to mention that. So, I'm requiring the uh, con.php. So, that will just um, help me to connect to the database. And that is very, very important. Now below here, I'll just come and say uh, mail. Sorry, uh, I'm I'm just uh, creating um, a variable uh, called uh, mail, and I'm setting that to be equal to null. Yeah, so like uh, basically as we are starting, we don't have any email address. Uh, we will now to be able to get that email address from the forgot password.php. So um, now to be able to get that email address, of course, from the post method, as I've mentioned, we're just going to come and have a new uh, statement. And the condition of uh, this if statement will be if it's set, uh, the post method remember we want to get the email address provided using the post method so we're just going to come and say post and uh, in here sorry uh, in here we're just going to come and say submit remember um, we have uh, the, the button having the name of uh, submit uh, so submit and now inside here the code will be uh, we now want to have the variable mail and we now want to set it to be equal to what uh, we have collected from the post method so um, basically what i do is I, get, I just usually come and grab the whole of this um, the whole of this up to there and i just paste that 
and I just uh, rename this to mail. So basically now through the post method we are able to get the email address and now we are just uh, like storing that email address in this, uh, in this specific uh, variable. So that now every time we call this variable we are indeed getting the email address that was provided in the forgot password page. So of course you also need to add that with a semicolon. Uh, that happens with the PHP script and now I want to have a nested if statement here so I'm just going to come and say if again and here the condition will be the variable mail remember now we already have the email uh, here so whenever we reference these uh, or we have these we are indeed talking about the email address that we have collected and um, what you now want to do is to validate that specific email address that we have so you see if the email and uh, inside here again we're going to have another nested if statement so i'll just come and say if so basically here we want to validate and we're just going to come and say filter that's called variable and uh, here we are just going to come and say the variable mail in capitals we'll say filter underscore validate so this is how we just validate the email so just come and say validate underscore email so th that is uh, in itself uh, uh, what an inbuilt stuff or that will just help us to validate uh, the email address so it's not something that I'm just going to come up with it is something that is provided like within, within PHP yeah so uh, and now um, if it is uh, good to go then we are just now going to come and select that from uh, the database or we are going to collect the email address that we have in the database uh, this is because we want now to be able to ensure that yes you have provided a valid email address but do we have it in our, in our database is that the email address that you provided during registration now for us to be able to do that we need to check the email address we have in our database and to be able to do that we are going to come and have the uh, SQL uh, we just specifically basically creating um, a select statement sort of yeah so we can now come and say wait a minute we need to have this in brackets and um, <clears throat> yeah I just want to have a semicolon there so now inside here we're going to have um, the select statement so I just come and say uh, select and we're just going to select this specific um, uh, data that is the email or the mail uh, you're also going to get the username so in in my uh, database if you watch the previous video I have a specific uh, table that has these columns the mail that stores the email address the uname that stores the username and uh, the staff ID uh, the staff ID yeah so these are just uh, but uh, the columns that of course is stalling the specific information the staff id the username and the mail and uh, i have this from the table called um, users yeah so users and uh, i want to select these information the mail the username and the staff id um, of uh, the specific uh, account and to be able to get uh, the details uh, of this specific account that um, is that its password is being reset um, i'm going to use the email address provided so the email address provided will help me to pull out the your username 
for that specific person who is resetting the password and their staff ID. So to be able to do that, I'll um, need to come and say uh, where um, where the mail is equals to because this is a string we need to have it in single quotes um, where the is equals to the mail remember whenever we have this we are referring to the email address provided so here we are not just selecting any mail or any username or any staff id from the users we are selecting this um, where the mail that we have in the database is equals to the mail that is provided so if they are not matching then we just you're just going to be told that the email address is is not matching like you have to pro provide the email address that you provided during registration yeah so so we're now going to come and uh, say if that is not the case like if we cannot find that if we seem not to find that we're just going to come and say all die like we just terminate that uh, code right there so we're just going to come and use the MySQL Ella. So this is also another inbuilt uh, stuff. So MySQL, MySQLi, in fact, uh, underscore Ella. Remember MySQL is, uh, is, is no longer working. If you use it, then you're going to have problems. So we have the MySQLi, which is MySQL improved. So now that we have that there, um everything is working fine like if you don't find the email address we just like terminate that thing and edit like there of course you're going to tell the user uh, maybe yeah what has happened um yeah so now uh if 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 um that is not the case if the email address provided matches what we have in the database or at least matches one of the emails that we have in the database then we want to like um, create a query here and store the results in the uh, in 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 uh, a valuable code results so we just like want to have this information and store it in a variable code result that is the username the email and the staff id so results and we'll store them here so i'll just say mysqli underscore uh, query and here we need the database connection so i'm just going to come and refer to the con uh, uh, this con is a variable that we have within the con.php uh, which is that um rhino uh, php code that is helping me to get uh, the um, database name um the table name and of course if there is any password in this case we don't have any password so like those credentials so we have them in this con.php so uh if i may just take a second to show you that if i may so this is the con.php um it's of course within the validate folder where i am like the forgot and the con are within the same uh, folder and um yeah this is taking some time yeah you can see now here we have the con.php and it has uh, the um if let me just um collapse this you see here we have the db host which is localhost we have the db user which is root we have the db password which is nothing and we have uh, the db name which is forgot pass to tutorial so uh, this is the con that i'm referring to uh, here and because i included it on top here then we are able to get the con if you don't require it on top here then it means you are not able to refer to this con that we are including here yeah i know these are basic stuff but yeah some of us may not be able to understand what is going on that's why i'm taking my time to be able to do this I'll explain it bit by bit so um I will now want to also get the SQL. Remember, this is the statement that has the information that we need to store here. So I also need to come and have this variable here. So SQL. 
yeah and that is very very important so now we have the information stored here or there in that result so we are also going to create another variable we're just going to call it q and this one will be my sqli underscore affected underscore lows and here we are going to have the con yeah and we just want to see um if uh there are any laws that are affected within the database if there are any laws that are affected within the database so here we just want to see if the email address provided uh, matches one of the email addresses that we have in the database so this is one of the ways this is one this is the way actually this is the way that we are verifying whether the email address provided um, is in our database so um, now because uh, we having the laws that are affected uh, being stored in this variable Q then um, what we need to do now is to check uh, if the laws affected are less than zero so if they are less than zero then it means we didn't get any email address that is matching what you have provided but if it is more than one uh, if it is one then it means that uh, we have an email address and if it is more than one then it means we have a duplicate and we are unable to know which uh, of the account that has the email address you have provided you want to reset so in that case it will be a problem and we're just going to tell you that there's a duplicate like we cannot be able to uh, reset your password so I'm just going to come and have yet another if a statement here and what I'm doing inside here is to as I mentioned check to see whether the laws affected here is greater than one uh, remember as I mentioned uh, here with the my S MySQLI underscore affected underscore laws, uh, we are able to uh, know how many laws were affected in the database. Uh, that is to mean if there is any match of an email address. Uh, so if there is at least one match, then one row is affected. If there is two, then two are affected. If nothing, then no, no row is affected. Yeah, so if it is less than one, that means we have a problem we didn't get that we're just going to come and say echo and basically here we are going to have some ph i mean some um, html so we're just going to come and have a div i need to just style it a little bit so and because it will be an alert message we're just going to come and say alert all right and uh yeah this will be this will not be meaning anything good so it will be danger uh absolute rather okay Ab. hey, what's wrong here absolute uh center and text should also be center and uh, we are going to have a lol so lol is equals to alright yeah so we have that there so that yeah it's just the uh, button um so let me before i forget let me just come and uh, close it here uh, before I forget that and gives me problems uh, remember now the single code is lapping the whole of this div um, I forgot to do that I don't know yeah like that so we need to get rid of this one here yeah so the, the single code should be lapping the whole uh, the whole div so now within this div we are also going to come and have a button this is the button that will be crossing this alert message so i'm just going to come and say 
uh, button and uh, um, let me just tile this button a little bit so to do that I'll just come and give it a class of um, cross and looks like something is long somewhere okay let's assume everything is good until we test it yeah so within the button we're also going to give it a type a type of um, what guess yeah button and um, we're also going to yeah to make it in such a way that you can dismiss it we're just going to come and say data uh, dismiss is equals to a lot so by just doing that then we're just going to come and we're just going to have an X that when you click it the message it disappears and we're also going to come and have area rainbow uh, area rebel bell yeah um, being uh, closed yeah just that so um now we want to have now the x that is the closing button that that, that x sable so we're just going to have that within a span just to create some space within them so span or oh, that should be still there so span and here we're just going to have the x you're going to see this in uh, real life and uh, here the it will be area hidden uh being equal to true okay now the button is done that's all that we need to do in that so remember this just the uh, the the message now we need to uh, have uh, the specific message itself that will be appealing in this remember this is just the button that will help me to that will help you to close the button um, now I need to have the message still within this div so um, let me just style this a little bit so it will just have some red text so for that we're just going to come and say text danger um yeah and now uh, we should now come and have what yeah um the closing span here and have uh, the message that we intend to showcase here we should be email address uh, did not match yeah just like that and we should not also forget to add that with a semicolon so that is if the loads affected are less than one now we need to come and say else what if that is not the case so else so we need some other code for that so else if um if uh, the loads affected remember the loads affected we are storing them in a variable called q is greater than one it means yes we found a match then uh, we should now come and have another message and just to save some time i'm just going to grab this one here and just change the message so because it is still the same stuff yeah so if you don't understand this then just go to the previous one and see how we have done it so now uh, this one will be for duplicate if it is greater than one remember it should not be greater than one it should be equal to one remember if it is greater than one then it means we have 
um, to email addresses that match what the user has provided so here it should be uh, duplicate email address duplicate email address yeah duplicate email address found Yeah, so like we found a duplicate and we are not able to tell which of the accounts you want to reset the password yeah so everything else should remain the same yeah, because it's still not something that will allow you to continue so it should be danger or just appears in land yeah and else else now um if if the queue is uh equal remember we don't say equal we say equal equal because when you say equal you're just like assigning um the value i think on the left to the value on the right or vice versa but if you want to check if they are the same then we say equal equal so this one is the equals and uh, when they are two and when they are one it is an assignment yeah. so we can say it is equal one then we now want to come and um, uh, get the id get the id and we also now want to um, I'll be able to uh, have some stuff in uh, the activation key yeah we we'll, like want to sort of create an activation key yeah that should be used um, for security reasons to reset your password so let's just see how we're going to do this as I explain it bit by bit so here we will be creating a variable called um, res of result and this one will be helping us to fetch the, uh, the, the the information so we're just going to come and say mysqli underscore fetch underscore array and uh, here we are going to have the variable results so remember we have the results on top here where we have the data so now we are storing that in uh, in 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 this variable again called results and uh, this will now help us to be able to like get the little data that we want so like for the id it will be equal to the variable res and uh, here we want to have uh, the id remember <coughs> we fetched the id from the database uh, on top here so select whatever staff id yeah so now to be able to have that specific id we need to do what we are doing right now and uh, this will be a uh, staff id remember that should be in single quotes so now here we have uh, the id and we can indeed be able to echo it if we want to echo it and see what we have inside <coughs> we are also going to um, now uh, sort of uh, create um, an activation key here so to be able to create the activation key we're just going to use the md5 this will just help us to have an array of um, characters mm, yeah numbers uh, letters symbols and all that that will help us to create that um, key yeah so it will be sort of an encrypted uh, value that is yeah so um we're just going to come and say L uh, read is equals to md5 yes encrypting this and uh, we want to just come and say unique id 
so it's sort of we are creating a unique id and uh, yeah, just to encrypt it we're just going to have this information run and uh, should come and say that is true yeah so just like that and we should also come and edit with the semicolon okay so now there we have the unique id stored in this in this variable called read and so now here we can come and say that key uh, is equals to to ensure that still encrypt we are going to use the md5 and now the variable read so now we have um, the specific key that we have created here um, and stored in this now being stored in a variable called key and so now what we want to do is to update um, the table that contains uh, the credentials yeah so we're just going to come and uh, create an update um, statement here so sql uh, is equals to update and we are updating the table called users hope we called it users not users users and we want to set uh, the activation key so uh, in in the table users we have a column called activation so this is where we want to store this specific key uh, that we are just going to use when we are resetting the password just for security reasons uh, activation uh, is equals to uh, the key itself what we have here uh, where um, where the staff ID the staff ID is the column that we have in our table users so the staff ID remember we stored when we collected the staff ID from uh, the um, database we stored it in a variable called ID if I can just take you right there um, just a minute as I try to show you the uh, yeah we, here we have it so we corrected that uh, with the help of this we are able to store all the information collected in this variable and now with it we are able to get the staff id uh, st store it in this uh, variable and now we are now uh, coming down here to try and use it so we are saying where the staff id um, is equals to the id Again, this should be because it should be in single quotes. ID. Else, if if we don't have such an ID, uh, then we should now terminate that code. So all die, and we're going to have the MySQLi we just be terminating that code at that point if we don't have an id in the database that is matching what we have here now we are in the juicy part of uh, this whole process and this is where we'll be sending the email or a link to the email address um, now that we have verified everything that the email address is valid and it is what we have in the database and we don't have a duplicate then we want to send um, a reset link into this uh, email address uh, but before we get started with that uh, I would want to pause there and talk about something that is very very important that if you're working uh, 
on a local host then you need to set up your local host server um, for my case i'm using a zamp uh, if you're using WAMP, then i think uh, you need to uh, do some research on how you go about setting uh, that so that uh, you can be able to send an email address from your local host uh, in this video I'll just, just be covering how you can do it in ZAMP I don't know whether it is different with WAMP because I've never worked with uh, WAMP um, well, if I have then <coughs> I didn't gain that enough experience to be able to show you how to go about that so I want to uh, be able to show you how you can be able to set up your ZAMP local host so that you can be able to send an email address or an email ladder from your local host so we're just going to get out of uh, this uh, whole Visual Studio thing here uh, and we just head on to uh, the file explorer so um, maybe just yeah work with me so I'm just opening uh, the uh, file explorer or you can open any folder uh, basically I want you to head on to your um, uh, HD docs so uh, forgive me because uh, my the machine is a little bit slow here it has a lot in it spread so um, I'm just opening the localhost um, C um, and I'm heading on to the ZAMP and remember this is my uh, localhost so it's always located on local disk C so I locate the file or folder called ZAMP now within the ZAMP uh, folder you need to come and locate the PHP folder the PHP folder and within the PHP folder here we are looking for a file called um, php.in because this is the file that you want to edit to enable us to um, be able to send an email from the local host so I'll right click it and say open with uh, I'll just open it with notepad in my case everything is set so I'm just going to show you how you can go about setting that and here maybe you can just come and try to find um, you can just come and try to find what uh, win32 just try to find win32 if you can be able to find that okay um smtp yeah so we have it here so maybe we can just have that there so this is very 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 important and we just want to deal with this information here so um first of all ensure that if you have any semicolons here that you remove them if you have any semicolons here you should remove them so it should lean for width that two only full stop uh, http full colon forward slash forward slash php dot net forward slash smtp it, this one should lead smtp in capitals is equals to smtp dot gmail dot com so if you don't have anything like this then you should include it so especially the gmail dot com should include that so like everything should look as it is here then this one should be as it is so like http uh, colon forward slash forward slash php dot net forward slash smtp hyphen port and this one should be smtp underscore port it should be equal to 587 so if it is like something like 60 or any other value just change it to 587 or yeah that, that part i think it's that the default one is 60 but you can change it to this if it is working with 60 then well and good or any other value yeah so but it should be like this and uh don't forget that we should not have any semicolons within this part that i have highlighted okay so this one should be left as they are with the semicolon here if you have a semicolon then you should remove it so the said mail underscore form should be equals to 
the email address that you want the verification of the reset link to be sent to so when you're working localhost then you have to set the email address but when it goes online then you don't have to do this yeah uh, but this because it is for test purposes we just testing remember when you're in the local host it's all about uh, testing yeah so you have to provide that email address here but when it goes online then it should be uh, based on the email address provided by the user but here we have to set up everything yeah just to ensure that yeah everything is working so um, that is very very important Yeah, now you need to look for sedmail. Uh, I hope I should be able to get it here. Maybe search mail. Yeah, so uh, let me see. Yes, sedmail. So this is again very, very, very important. Um, you should come and have the sedmail underscore path be equal to this line maybe i can provide it in the description of this video so that you can just copy and paste it there all right so we are now done with uh, the php dot in so you should not forget to save the changes don't forget to save the changes so i will even close that and now the next thing that we need to look out for is uh, the said mail so i'm just going to head on back to uh, the zamp and here i will see the said mail folder i will open this and here i need to come and look for the uh, said mail under uh, dot in rather and i'm going to edit this with notepad again and here we again need to set this if there's any semicolon in this port make sure you remove it if there is any semicolon in this port in this line you should remove it and it should read smtp underscore server is equals to smtp.gmail.com this is because we are using um a gmail uh address we're using a gmail address so if you're using yahoo or any other domain then you should have that specific domain here remember this is just the domain that you're including so in my case i'm testing it using uh, gmail so that is very 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 important now you need also to come and look for these ones So just to leave that as it is, that one should be left as it is. Yeah, the port I've said it should be that. SMTP underscore port should be 587. That is very, very important. Now, uh, you need to um, remember you should also provide uh, the uh, email address again uh, in the third mail dot in just like you did in the php dot in that email address that you want to set the reset link to you need to provide it here so it should be reading out underscore username is equals to your email address provide your email address and here you should read out underscore password you should provide your password Uh, the last one but it is optional is the false underscore sender again you should come and provide your email address here you should come and provide your email address there and that's all so all you need to edit are these two files the send mail dot in located in zamp uh, send mail folder you also need to reset the or set up some few stuff in the php.in located in zamp php folder so uh, that is done and don't forget that if there's any semicolon in front of the line that you're changing you should remove it it should not it should not have a semicolon if it has a semicolon then you won't be able to set uh, an email address 
okay so that is all that i required all i needed to mention there uh, because it is important just to help us to set our emails or send emails so uh, yeah from of course localhost if you're not using localhost then ignore all that okay now let's proceed on and uh, now we can send our emails very comfortably so now well, first of all um, we need to encrypt uh, our email address uh, we don't need to showcase it to everyone so for that case uh, we are going to create a variable call it a mail and he'll set that to be base 64 and that's called encode and remember we already have our mail yeah, that we collected from the forgot password remember when we refer to this we always refer link to the email address that we have collected from the forgot password page and that we have verified uh, with the database to see that they are matching and now we also need to get the name yeah just for uh, when we'll be lighting the e email body so we can just come and see that the name is equals to remember we have uh, this information collected from the database being stored in these variables you can remember when we are creating the mysql underscore fetch we have that information being stored in that so whenever we want to get any information from that we just use the variable res and in this case we want to get the username remember it is you uh, your name oh, yeah so just like we got the um, the, 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 the id yeah, we are getting the name storing it in that uh, and now uh, we want now to like uh, have the recipient uh, so down here we are going to say to so we are setting it to who and we are setting it to the email address provided remember we are not writing the real email address here we want to get that email address that was provided so we we'll just come and have the mail so just like we have collected the username we can collect the mail or we can just be able to get a mail yeah that we have uh, fetched from the uh, database of course and that we have <coughs> matched with what the user has provided and we also want to have the subject this is very important so so email etiquette so subject uh, and the subject is equals to um, password reset yeah so that will be the subject and now down here we have the body so that is the the message and uh, of course we are saluting the person here can have anything um, so um, hello and uh, we want to get the name uh so hello name remember we have stored the username of this person who is resetting the password in this so when we say hello name we, this will just echo the, the username of that person um yeah hello and uh, just having a break here so hello mm -hmm. then we continue with the message hello um,
Mm, yeah, so we can just have a message like that or anything else that you prefer. And now what we want to have here is the reset link. So here because I'm working localhost um, or in a localhost environment, I needed to ensure that um, I'm able to access the localhost from the Gmail account. Yeah, like when you click on that link, it will take you to the localhost. And what I just did is to use the IP address. Um, if you want to get the IP address of your computer, then all you need to do is to go to your SMD. And here you just come and type IP config. And this should give you your, when you just hit enter, it should give you your, sorry, it should be IP, IP config. Yeah, it should give you your, um, a specific um, IP number. So this is the IP number that I need to take. So with this IP number now, I can um, <clears throat> be able to use it and uh, uh, be able to refer to my local host from the Gmail. Yeah, so I hope you're understanding this, that we are creating a link here um, that is on a, a website that is online and we want to link to a website that is locally host. Uh, hosted so it doesn't just happen like that so you need to have it in a special way and this is how you're just going to have it just uh, to avoid wasting a lot of time so just come and have an anchor tag or a link here or just come and have a link here so uh, hlf is equals to so this is how we are going to have it. Let me have single quotes here instead of double quote. So I'll just come and say HTTP forward slash forward slash uh, the IP address that I have uh, gotten from the IP config on the CMD you need to do that on your computer mm. this is mine and of course you can see it is hidden so yeah, of course I don't I don't need to show it um, then I'm linking to uh, the page um, that I want to set the person to so um, for th this page that that is set password page uh, is on a folder called uh, forgot pass tutorial that is the main folder so in your case it could be different forgot underscore pass underscore tutorial tutorial yeah so that is my main folder so this is basically the path yeah, the path to where I want to link the person to so public underscore pages underscore reset dot php and I also want to get the mail so I like I'm passing the mail through the link but it is encrypt remember so we are not showcasing it so mail is equals to mail um, and and also the key uh, which is equal to of course now the key itself <coughs> yeah and that is the link itself that is the link itself so this is the link that we are now sending to 
uh, to, 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 to the person and um, we also need to come and say you know that if this was you we're just trying to add some more information here if this was you if this was you then uh, within the link we're just going to tell them to click here so um, remember I didn't close my anchor tag so I'm closing it here and now we are telling if this was you then within this link click here uh, and we are telling them to click there so this will be the link itself so like when they click on this then they'll be taken to this path uh, and why are they clicking there to reset your password yeah and we are done there can just break it a little bit there. just creating some space yeah you can add maybe more information if you want like thank you and uh, yeah, this is IT skills academy you can write anything here of course So um, that is done like that. We should also not forget to end that with a semicolon. So we add that with a semicolon there. And that's it with the email address. Now, um, it's always important to set the content type uh, when setting, uh, setting HTML emails like on setting it from the local host and all that so we can even come and have that here and say or we set content type when um setting html email Yeah, so how we do that is um, see handle is equals to
okay now we also need to set this such that Yeah, you'll, al you'll always notice that such emails are emails that you don't have to reply to. So those that will send uh, you the reset link, like you don't have to reply to. So we also need to include that here. So we're just going to say handler, and this will be equal to. And of course, before we have that we should have a period here so this should be equal to in single quotes um, from no reply <coughs> at gmail.com sorry And here we should also come and create a variable, call it M, and it's just telling the information that we have provided on top here, the two, the subject in the message, so is equals to, a mail, just yes, all this information we are going to use it. So two, we're also going to have the uh, subject and also the message. So this is uh, the information that we have on top here, the mail, the name, um, the subject, the two, yeah, all that. And also the headers that we have set. Sorry. So we should also include the handler. Yeah. Add that with a semicolon and to be working fine. Now <coughs> we need to check if all that worked properly. It was an email sent? If it was sent, then we need to like give the user a success message. Was it not sent? And what is the problem if it was not sent? So remember, um, in the forgot password.php, we have this uh, session that we created, and I told you that we are going to create that session in the forgot.php. Now this is the time to create it. So this session that we are calling new. That you can see in the forgot password.php so this specific session so uh, that means the message will not be appealing in the forgot.php rather it will be appealing on the forgot password.php um, so we need to come and say that here so we're just going to come and say if creating an if statement here And uh, we'll say if M, this this one here, uh, and the code will be. First of all, we set the mail to be equal to none. This to be equal to none, and uh, we now come and create the session. Okay. 
I'm writing my own things here. So session and um, as we saw the session will be called new and uh, we're just going to say if that is equal to true and uh, we should also now come and uh, say where this information should be taken to so we're just going to come and say uh, handler if that is equal to true then uh, we'll take the uh, the person here so location and there we are going to basically echo so you see on top here we have uh, the hatch yeah, so um, we are going to write some script here that should tell that should tell the that should help in the redirection. That is, so we're just going to come and say echo, and we just going to come and say script, and type is equals to text. Um, text forward slash JavaScript of course should have the semi I mean the single quote there closing that and uh, here we should come and have a document dot location is equals to in single quotes hatch and that's it so we have the script closed here of course you should first of all open and close the script you should not write it like i'm doing here in an unprofessional way so just open your script and uh, your tag and uh, open it and close it rather yeah, so I'm even going to have it like this so that you can understand what is going on there. Yeah, so we have something like that. So you should have this first and then this one and then now the information inside it. Yeah, and that's the best way to do it. And I'm going to do it like that so that you can understand and also learn how to doing, do it the right way. <coughs> so I'm going to say that yeah to exit if that is done so that is if the that is if we have the contents here the two the subject the message and the headers collect um, else <coughs> if you have a problem with the two with the message with the headers and all that then we should like um, have an error message so I'll just come and say else echo <coughs> and uh, here we are going to have a div and just to practice what I'm preaching here um, inside this I'm going to come and have a div and also close it yes so it should be like that and then uh, we should have some content inside here even before we style it so i'll uh, first have the button open it and close it and uh, in the button we're just going to have um a message so I'm just going to come and include a message here. So it should be within span. So I should open it and close it here. 
and inside this pan we're going to have the message error so this will be the general error if we are unable to send the email so error occurred while uh, trying to send email so let me style this a little bit this will not be a good thing so we should say class is equals to text data this will make it red of course and uh, <coughs> don't forget to have this closed with a semicolon let's now style our button a little bit so type will be equal to a button uh, class is equals to close and data dismiss is equals to alert yeah and we should now finally uh, style the div so we'll give it a class of um this will be an alert message so that should be alert alert danger absolute Center text and we should also have it with a lol with a lol of alert Maybe we can also have yet another um, validation, whatever here. Yeah, if if the if the email was invalid, then you can come and say else. Yeah, so before we even go to check if the <coughs> email is matching and all that and collecting the information from the database um, uh, where the email is what the password is if yeah, even before we start um, collecting the information uh, based on the email address provided if the email address provided is invalid then we should go direct to um, telling the user that the email address they provided is not correct so we should have it in this uh, this, this um, color bracket here yeah so all this inside this uh, inside this will not happen if the email address is invalid all that will not um, take place so <coughs> Yeah, so let me just confirm that, that it should be, yeah, right there. So, yeah, where, <coughs> where we are, like, verifying or trying to validate the email address. So, uh, I'll just come here and say else. And just to save some time. 
I'm just going to come and pick this div with its echo and just change the message. And the message to invalid format. Invalid email format. And that's it. Oh, finally, we can also just come and try to see if the user tried to get into the forgo.php without entering any any email. Yeah, so you have to tell them that oh yeah you have to enter your email to proceed so i can just come and say else And I'm going to do the same and just change the email address, I mean the message. Uh, this should be, you should enter your email address. Yeah, so that is if the user will try to like send some uh, try to access the forgot.php without entering in the email address yeah and now that is the final thing now before we proceed to test whether that code is working um i would like to first of all show you the database here um, just for a moment as you can see here, I am within the um, PHP my admin in the database for got pass underscore tutorial, and the table is users. And here we have the information: the user ID, the uname, the mail, the password, and the activation uh, columns. And we have some information. And we have some information here. So this is the email address that we need. Uh, to provide here it is the email address that was provided during registration so um, with that in mind now uh, we can first of all head on to the uh, ph that is my um, visual studio code here um, because i have noticed that uh, we need to change this from staff id to use ID uh, because that's what we have in the database <coughs> so I will just come and um, have it as user ID and I'll just copy it uh, so that I can replace any other instant so like this one here so this should be, I'll be showing you this in a second if you have not seen that in uh, the database. So that one and we should also change this one. Yeah, so it should be like that. So if you can see from the database here, we have the user ID and not staff ID okay so now we can go to the forgot password.php and um, i'll just come and uh, refresh this page and then after that i'll try to provide um, 
first of all let me just test it and i provide the long email address so test at gmail.com then i try to recover and i'm redirected to the same page with um, this uh, message that email addresses did not match because the email address that i have provided is not matching the email address that is in the database so we need to provide um, a real email address so um, the correct email address is this one here just say the cover uh, yes and as you can see here we have a message that tells us that a password reset link was sent into your email but it looks like we have a problem here so let me see where we missed that because this should not be this big uh, remember remember the success message is within the forgot uh, password so you should get there and try to fix that problem uh, this is the uh, message a password reset link was sent into your email within the span Oh, sorry we should have it closed here yeah I think that is uh, what is causing the problem um, let me just try to see if that is the reason as to why so I'll just refresh this and I'll provide the email address again and try to recover and that has been collected as you can see so uh, it is that simple it's just a matter of uh, formatting so we need now to check the email um, to see um, email account to see if that email was indeed sent so I just want to go to my uh, gmail account so I'll um, just come and say gmail.com and uh, okay you needed to log into the second one all right as you can notice we have several um, emails sent here password reset uh, password reset IT skills academy if you can open one of the latest one here uh, to see what we have inside uh, you can see we have the information here hello someone requested to reset your password if this was you click here to reset your password if not just ignore this email and when i put uh, that link you're going to see the link appear um, just below there uh, so we have the mail and the key encrypted like we cannot be able to see the key or um, the email address so even if you're passing them via the link they're encrypted so uh, that's it so in the next video we'll now be trying to create the page that will now help us to uh, reset the password which is um, pretty very easy so thanks for watching and as usual see you in the next video and the final part of this tutorial take care